Well, that's one possible interpretation of me. In the truth and beauty of me, we will consider many other possibilities. We'll look and see what is true and what is beautiful about me. This project arose out of a very simple question. Is there any pain in my life? Don McCullen says, photography for me is not looking, it is feeling. My wife is chronically ill with multiple cirrhosis and suffers a lot of pain. So the answer to the simple question is, yes, there is pain in my life. In my project, I want to produce a set of images that represent a truth about my inner state. Something keeps me going through this pain. So in contrast, I want to produce images that show the beauty of me. To help me with my work, I looked again and again at images that made me feel something. Don McCullen's 1964 Cyprus image, Dorothea Lange's migrant mother, and David Heath's Dialogues with Solitudes. Andy Sewell's work fascinates me. At first his images appear ordinary, but they pull me in and they hold my attention. Every time I look I see so much more. In Arles, I met and spoke with Andy about his work. He told me his only secret is to keep looking until he sees. This has been great advice for my own work. Ivor Prickett's work tears me apart. His images elicit powerful emotions in me. They make me want to do something. They are a truth, but they're also strangely beautiful. I want my work to show this ever-present tension between truth and beauty. I spent three days in Madrid at Foto España. I met and spoke about their work with Patrick Pound, William Klein, Claire Strand, Sharon Kaur and Laura Latinsky. I also had dinner with Susan Bright, who was the curator for the show, and talked through how she put the show together. I spent a week in Arles at Rencontres where I met and spoke about their work with Andy Sewell, Mohamed Bouresi and Oliver Klink. <clears throat> in Oliver's 15-year project, Cultures in Transition, every image has its beauty and also captures the transition that is taking place in these Eastern cultures. His book is a haptic pleasure. Oliver agreed to be interviewed by me. The, the first question I've got is, so in your book you say, below the surface there exists a struggle between old and new. Tradition and modernity must come into balance as villagers hold to their spirit while coping with the reality of a modern world. How did you plan and prepare to capture this struggle? Uh, I, I, I do think photography at one point or another, it comes from the heart. You, you have to really believe and then understand the, uh, your subject. Or there's that famous phrase that says, what is in front of your camera, what is behind the, ca uh, behind the camera. So I kept going back to favorite photo books. I looked at individual images and images in sequence. I began to notice the power of framing, color or black and white, tone, shape, form, repetition and mirroring. I noticed jarring effects within transitions. The best photographs have a voice for the photographer. They are also coherent and consistent. Every time I look, I see something new from insights gained within conversations with photographers around me. I drew some conclusions from observing images and psychological biases human beings have. Nobody can know with any certainty what someone else feels or thinks. We all project onto what we see. Our projections are based on our own experience of life and similar situations we've seen before. Fear, threat, pain and boundaries all evoke strong emotions in us. Facial expressions and body posture signal commonly understood internal states. With all these fantastic inputs and conclusions, I kept producing work. I kept looking and trying out ideas inspired by other work I had seen. I played outside my habitual space. Then I set a selection on the floor to see how they worked together. 
individual images were beginning to work for me. The question then became, how do I sequence them to tell my story? I learnt from Madrid and Al how images need to work individually and together. Each image should say something itself and connect to the next image. There needs to be a consistency of style to the collection seen as a whole. Every decision of selection, sequence, crop, tone, shape, form and mirroring needs to be intentional. I played with light, form and tone. I used different situations in my life and let focus blur. I took images that I thought would add questions and interest to my work. As I did my work, there were two human biases I kept in mind. The first is that people seek data to be compatible with beliefs they currently hold. And the second is that people pay more attention to threat than to safety. So as I present my work, I realised I need to play to the projections of my viewer. Good work will surprise and make people test their own assumptions about truth and beauty. But what is true? In these two images I am smiling. In one I am happy and in the other I am distressed. Many people say you can always tell which is which by looking at the eyes. Having shown this pair of images to more than 50 people now, over two thirds choose the wrong image for the happy one. People project and they are often convinced that they are right. On seeing this, some say, yuck, how disgusting. Others say, wow, how beautiful. Just shows how important the eye of the beholder is. This image expresses a truth and beauty of me. It shows that the truth is elusive, it is fluid, and that there are many. Against the more painful pictures, it offers optimism about my internal state. The colours, pose, plus the prop of the sunglasses combine to easily draw out positive projections from viewers. Working on other surfaces helped me look at my project in different ways. I produced a photo book. My landings exhibition explored the village of Sassus in Cyprus through the deep feelings I had there. This idea of following my feelings is something I want to explore further as I take my project forward. Preparing a workshop made me think about what I want people to experience. It is a form I wish to explore much further in my project. I am collaborating with a sculptor who is going to make a sculpture of my head. I am collaborating with an artist who is going to produce an oil painting of my head. Each of these surfaces has given different perspectives for my project. This is my current portfolio for the truth and beauty of me. It gets across an idea of the internal pain I live with. It also presents what I see as beautiful about me in the close-up images and me in paint with sunglasses. There are thought-provoking images such as me posing dead on the lawn, followed by a shot of my blood. The eye followed by a similarly shaped leaf adds interest. There is a clear beginning, middle and end. So that's the current version of the truth and beauty of me. It is a work in progress. As am I, I continue to be a work in progress. The next phase of the project will look at relationships. Relationships with people, relationships around me, relationships with the world. And the beauty of this uh, MA is I don't know where it'll go, but I know it's going to be exciting and I can't wait to get going again. So, thanks for listening to my presentation and I hope you found it enjoyable. And most importantly, it raised some questions and was stimulating for you. Thank you very much.